So this video originally started out as a review of pre Asinix 4 and why it's one of the best solar bows in the game. Which, by the way, it's dropping this week from the Hypernet Strike. But Jack kept bringing up to me a different bow. That being Tyranny of Heaven. This is the last wish raid bow and it is craftable. Now listen, I always knew that Tyranny was a pretty good bow, but I just have never been a big fan of lightweight bows. And sure, Bungie has done numerous updates to lightweight bows to make them better, but Precisions, which is what pre Asinix is, has always felt the best, at least to me. With that being said, I do want to compare both of these bows because this season, solar bows are phenomenal. I would argue and say on the level of exotics, considering all the artifact mods that we have that grant you radiant, and when you're radiant, you can proc ignitions, and the fact that you can grant yourself radiant by simply landing two precision bow shots, it has never been a better time to use bows that are solar. With that being said, we're going to be comparing the Gonroll Adept pre Asnix. This means one with a draw time masterwork, elastic string, adept draw time. We're talking 540 base draw time, which makes it the fastest firing precision bow in the game. And we're going to be comparing that to the craftable tyranny of heaven with enhanced perks and decide once and for all, which of these solar bows is the best. Now, before we go any further, somebody's going to say, Cross, what about strident whistle? Don't get me wrong. Strident's good. It used to be my favorite bow, but understand pre asnix has become the king of precisions for me. Hence why we're making this comparison here. But let's first look at the differences between a precision frame and a lightweight frame bow. Precision bows are coming in at a base of 684 draw time. The elastic string and a draw time mass work, you could take that down to 576. The adept version of pre Asnix is unique though, as with an adept draw time mod, you could take that draw time down even more to 540, which makes it the fastest firing precision bow in the game. Now moving over to our lightweight bows, we have a base draw time of 580, which can be brought down to 500 with elastic string, as well as a draw time mass work. Now for some folks, they're going to like lightweights for the faster fire rates. Also, you get a mobility boost considering it's a lightweight frame, but keep in mind, you are getting less accuracy and you're dealing less damage. You do get higher stability, handling, and reload speed. Reload speed is nice, but none of these are really big deal breakers. Now, taking a look at damage numbers, starting with Tyranny of Heaven. Against red bars, we're doing 12,184 damage to the body and 19,470 to the head. And at Carl, we're doing 7,310 to the body and 11,682 to the head. Pre-accidents against red Red bars were doing 14,336 to the body and 21,503 damage to the head. And against Carl, it's 8,602 to the body and 12,902 to the head. Now, it's worth noting that inside of Grandmaster Nightfalls, pre Asnix with Radiance and of course Solar Surge is able to one shot our low health red bar ads. Things like Scions, Dogs, Taken Scions, etc. And you don't even need Minor Spec in order to achieve this. However, Tyranny of Heaven needs both Minor Spec and Radiant to achieve this. And even then, during gameplay, I found it to be inconsistent. Sometimes getting the one shot and other times it wouldn't. But the Scorch from Kindling Trigger would eventually kill them. So yes, it can kind of one shot, but that's something to keep in mind, guys. That's the difference between a precision frame and a lightweight bow. The ability to snag those one shot kills, which just means, especially this season, more ignitions and more Scorch. This just kind of gives you a point of reference between these two. For anyone who may be wondering about the speed of these bows, with our God Will pre Asnix, with Elastic String, a draw time mass work, and an Adept draw time mod, we do reach that 540 draw time, which takes approximately 32 frames to reach full draw. With Archer's Tempo active, we were reaching a full draw in approximately 24 frames. Now, Tyranny of Heaven, with the last string and a draw time mass work, we have a 500 draw speed bow, which only takes 29 frames to reach that full draw. And with Archer's Tempo, it only takes it 22 frames. Again, a lot of these are really neck and neck, which is exactly why I always talk about the feel of the bow. Everybody gets really hung up on that draw time. They're like, oh, Tyranny of Heaven. It has 500 draw time. Obviously, it's the better choice. But sometimes, guys, it's the subjective things. Having your bow feel good to shoot makes a difference. And pre asnix for me, feels good to shoot. I can feel the bow when I'm landing it, when I'm hitting crit after crit. The loot feels fluid and nice. And I'm not saying you don't get that from Tyranny of Heaven, but it is something that I've noticed precisions possess over lightweights. But this also takes us to the most important piece of this debate. It's perks, it's obtainability, and it's gun rolls. We're also going to talk about their origin trait. But first, let's just look at pre asnix In column three, we have Archer's Tempo, Shoot the Loot, Inline Action, Perpetual Motion, Perfect Floats, and Range Finder. Over in column four, we have Explosive Head, Incandescent, Precision Instruments, Successful Warm Up, Opening Shot, and Collective Action. Now, I've gone over my God roll before for PvE players. To me, it's Archer's Tempo and Incandescent. Some people love Incandescent with Shoot the Loot, others like Precision Instruments or even Explosive Head. But for the way I use bows, Archer's Tempo Incandescent has always
always been my favorite. And you see it here on last week's Nightfall, where we're lining up shot after shot. This is just me doing a solo run of DMs, and you see how well it's handling all of these engagements. The ability to apply Scorch, it's synergizing with Solo 3.0, and all the artifacts that we already have baking into our solo weapons this season, Incandescent is phenomenal here. It's just passively spreading Scorch to nearby targets on kills while synergizing with everything. Now, as for our origin traits, pre Astonix comes with three options. We've got Stunning Recovery, Vanguard's Vindication, and Wild Card. Now, the one I mainly use is Wild Card, and it's actually a good origin trait, as final blows with this weapon have a chance to create experimental sub munitions at the target's location, that being those Telesta Bolts. Now, they don't do a tremendous amount of damage, but the main thing is they lock down areas, especially when you're killing large groups of ads. You may have Incandescent that weaken nearby enemies, and it'll be that Telesta Bolt on the ground that finishes them off. And depending on the type of enemy you kill, more of those mini Telesto bolts will also drop. One for a red bar, three for orange bars, three for mini bosses, and seven for bosses, which is a beautiful thing to watch. Now look, let me be frank, it's not the most meta-defining origin trait, but let's be real. Most origin traits are small marginal benefits, and they're not meant to be exotic level crazy. Just additional add-ons that tie into a weapon's foundry. And I believe this Castoid origin trait ties in perfectly here. Now moving on to Tyranny of Heaven. In column three, we have Moving Targets, Wellspring, Archer's Tempo, Pugilist, Explosive Head, Dragonfly, and Successful Warm-Up. In our column four, we have Golden Tricorn, Snapshot, Collective Action, Swashbuckler, Adagio, One For All, and of course, Incandescent. Now you can go with the exact same God roll here that we talked about with pre -Asnix, that being Archer's Tempo and Incandescent. But the other interesting combination and the combination that most people like is Dragonfly and Incandescent. It's something else, guys. You get extra Kabloomies on kills. And this is a silent pairing, and it seems to be the most popular role for Tyranny of Heaven. Now, for those that are curious about the damage values differences between Incandescent and Dragonfly, testing out Tyranny of Heaven, the explosion damage from Incandescent was dealing a maximum of 1,708 damage versus Carl. Plus, it would apply Scorch. Dragonfly was dealing a maximum of 10,577 explosion damage versus Carl. And of course, with both equipped, you would get two explosion values, dealing at a whopping 12,285 damage. Now, I agree, guys. On paper, this is so solid, and especially solid for at-level content. And you can see both these perk combinations working off one another. However, I did notice for in-game content, most notably GMs, which is what we normally base our builds on, if not for solo content, is that Dragonfly dips off for me. Listen, I know I'm not making any friends right now. I got the Cult of Tyranny of Heaven ready to come down on me because I said Dragonfly isn't my first option and that I would just prefer Archer's Tempo with Incandescent. But I'm just saying, yes, I like the extra explosions and it's nice, but Dragonfly dips off for me in in-game. The question is, would you trade out Dragonfly for Archer's Tempo? And that's kind of where I'm at right now, because this season we have Rays of Precision, where Solar Precision final blows while Radiant cause combatants to ignite. So you're already spreading out a ton of damage. And on top of that, you can build into those ignitions through your fragments. Now, as for Tyranny's origin traits, we have Explosive Pact. This weapon gains bonus stability and reload speed when activating a grenade ability. Healing grenades and grenade final blows grant additional stacks of the bonus. Now, extra stability and reload speed is always nice. And yeah, there are ways you can work around this origin trait, but nothing I get too crazy about. But what really sets Tyranny of Heaven apart from pre asnix is that it is craftable. You don't have to rely on RNG. You don't have to get through any grueling Grandmaster Nightfalls. You can simply craft this role if, of course, you have a team to do Last Wish with, which is a whole nother can of worms. But we've done the cheese in the past, which we've made multiple videos about. I'm not sure if those cheeses still work, but that's how we lock down all of our Last Wish God rolls or craftable rolls. With that being said, let's talk about the artifact perks and why both of these bows are so good this season. First, we have Unstoppable Bow. Secondly, we have Solar Surge in pretty much everything. So one way or another, this bow is being overcharged. We've got Flint Striker, which allows solar weapons to grant us Radiant by getting those rapid precision hits, which two are only required here to proc, which is giving us that 25% buff in damage. We've got Kindling Trigger, which will allow our solar weapons to apply Scorch to Unscorched Combatants when we have Radiant, and Rays of Precision, which allows our solar precision final blows to cause combatants to ignite while we are Radiant. You see that, guys? We're already getting so many explosions, which takes us to our verdict. Now that we've gone over how these two bows perform, we went over the god rolls. Let's ask the question, which one of these bows is better? To me, guys, it's still pre asnix Don't get me wrong. Tyranny of Heaven is a phenomenal lightweight bow. And I think with at-level content, it's fantastic. Truly. At-level content, I'll take Tyranny all day long. But when I get into Masters and Grandmasters, I want pre asnix I want something with a little more more meat behind it, snagging me those precision kills, proc 
shocking radiance and ignitions and even though i love dragonfly and the incandescent combination that's on tyranny of heaven dude we're getting that and more with the ignitions from our artifact mods i know that's only for this season but that's pretty much half of this year so for the time being pre asnix for me guys and even probably beyond the final shape this bow will continue to be my favorite legendary bow in the game not even my favorite solar bow my favorite legendary bow in the game i'm okay with giving up 40 draw speed and sticking with my 540 draw time considering the extra bit of damage we get constantly with that being said though i do want to mention this is one of those things where it kind of boils down to preference and if there's anything to take away from today's video is that i hope this brings some attention to both of these bows or solar bows in general we've been really stuck on like exotic primaries this season especially things like polaris lance and sunshot and even vex the class but sometimes it's these legendary weapons that get overlooked and they may not make the biggest splash at least compared to their exotic counterparts but by god do they tote their own weight and then some pre asnix or tyranny of heaven either one of these bows with our artifact mods this season will carry you through so much content will allow you to engage in long range territories but simultaneously allowing you to deal with anything up close and with the right roll you'll be clearing everything in front of you well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right